Um, I'm here to share with you two really important things that I've learned so far in how to change the game before it changes you. Um, one of them is a way of being. The other is just such a simple tool that I learned. The way of being is this. Sorry, mother. Illegitimi non carborundum. In essence, this means to be courageous. It means to have tenacity. It means to have a huge amount of resilience. It's the thousand things that go wrong before the one that goes right. Now, I've been really lucky to bring this philosophy, this way of existing, to a thing that I really love. I work in sports technology. Now, the way that I exist in sports technology is to look at the human being as a species, where there are two things that really differentiate us from all other species. There's making fire, and there's clothing ourselves. I work in the clothing ourselves bit, so job security is pretty damn good. <laughs> and in working at this interface, this interface between the human and clothing technology, I've seen some really amazing things happen. I've seen that technology can be the difference between first and second place. I've seen that with technology, human potential can get to the highest possible levels and human performance can do things that we never realized would be possible. It's been really a pleasure to work with athletes all over the world to change the shapes of their bodies so that they move more effortlessly through the water, to make them feel lighter, tighter, brighter. And I've been lucky enough to have products on the backs of athletes at some of the most competitive leagues on the planet. World Championships, Olympics, world records have been broken, gold medals have been won. So I've seen what technology can do. I've also seen what technology can do to a family. I grew up in a world where Obviously, my father was my hero. And I've seen that with technology growing and changing at the rate that it does, resistance can be futile. So my father, who was uh, my hero, an endurance athlete, a triathlon pioneer, and one of the last human versions of Photoshop. So he worked in a, in a laboratory where they would use chemicals, photographic techniques, a scalpel to sculpt a, a model's thigh to create the images that you would see in printed press for the advertising industry. The digital revolution took hold. I hadn't even sent my first email by then. And his industry evaporated overnight. And I realized at that moment that there are three people or three kinds of people in the world. There are people that when things like that happen, they perish. There are people when things like that happen, they pivot and adapt, just like my parents did. And then there are the people that create those shifts in the world. And I made a declaration right then and there as a petulant 15-year-old that I would create shifts in the world. And that's what I've been doing ever since, living under these words. Yet, a really interesting thing started to happen. Because every now and again, those marginal gains that you were so convinced that you were going to achieve didn't get the results that you'd expect. The athlete wouldn't win. So something else was happening. It's human will. And you've all heard of the old adage of, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. Well, absolutely. But breaking habits, encouraging people to smash their paradigms is the most challenging thing. Because also, where there's a will, there's a no way. And I've seen so many raised eyebrows of the, are you sure? I don't think so. How much? And you realize that being in somewhat of a technical arms race, it's not where you see success. Similarly, in a, in, a, in, a, in a business environment where, you know, after five years and millions of dollars, you've got this wonderful, beautiful technology that, you know, you know can change the world. You, 
walk gingerly to the edge of the commercial part of the, the company where there's this imaginary wall. You throw it over the wall, listen for the cheers, and all you hear are people running away, like you just dropped the proverbial bomb. So again, something else has to happen. And I figured, you know, we can get away with it. I'm British, so I can be charming. <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, you can be diplomatic as a competitor within, but something still needed to be done. You can't just be a good storyteller. You have to have stories that really mean something. And so that brought me to the tool, such a simple tool. I discovered this several years ago. Um, it's Roberto Verganti's tool for technical epiphany. Um, for me, it represents the beautiful relationship between fashion and function. I realize I spent most of my existence in technology, the technical arms race, trying to be better and better and realizing that I was also being critical of other technologies that were just better. And I look at a lot of wearable technology right now, you know, that fill our drawers and our desks. You know, the world is not defined by steps and calories. Just like the scales in our bathroom don't make us thin, neither do they. It's about something else. And then meaning. You know, there are some incredible inspirational products in this space where true artistic expression has you know, created those changes. Products like the stiletto. I still don't understand the stiletto. <laughs> A rational engineer would never build the stiletto. Yet it exists. <clears throat> this is where, if you get this wrong, because you can see them going in two, different, two completely different directions, you lose authenticity you can become responsible for selling rainbows where there's perhaps not a pot of gold. So where you win, top right. Technical epiphanies, where a technology enables a new meaning in the world. Because with new meanings, you create new perspectives. And people start to perceive the world differently. When you perceive the world differently because perception is reality, what you feel is what you believe, the behavior starts to change, the movement starts to, to shift. And there are some really wonderful examples that sit up here, some of you will be, I'm sure, very familiar with. There was a race for some time up and down this vertical axis between Sony, Microsoft, Xbox, PlayStation, graphics processors, processor speed, volume size, Blu-ray, Wi-Fi, a technical arms race, and these always end in stalemate. And then Nintendo come along. They find motion sensing, a technology, and they look at gaming and realize that people don't just want to have mega thumbs. They want a physically immersive experience. So they bring these two things together, a technical epiphany. Apple do this all the time with desktop computing, smartphones, tablets, shifts in the world that create behavior change. So knowing this and doing this are two very different things, and that's where I come back to this. Illegitimi non carborundum, the way of being, which, by the way, the literal translation is, don't let the bastards grind you down. Because the world of technology is going to continue to develop at an exponential rate. And the world is going to evolve. It's nature's way. We mutate, we populate, we move on. The game is always going to change. So you have a choice. Be the change. Enable shifts. And don't let the bastards grind you down. Thank you.